Prime Minister's questions. The member for Point of Pale. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Honourable Prime Minister, could the Prime Minister provide this House with a status update on the San Fernando Waterfront Redevelopment Project, which was launched in June 2020 and was supposed to generate employment as well as economic activity for surrounding communities? Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, the San Fernando Waterfront Project which, as it is said, was launched in June 2020, which is approximately nine months ago. It's underway. There are a number of components in that project, and they're all underway, except one or two, which are having some issues with the EMA. And on the basis of, as a result of that, we have some further discussions and compliance issues with the EMA, and uh, my last information is that that work is being advanced. So if the member will give the appropriate notice, uh, the relevant minister would be able to give him the, up, the, the actual detail that he's looking for. But it requires appropriate notice. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister, when the project was launched by your government in June 2020, um, the issues with EMA should have been the taken care of. I am not hearing you very clearly. Sorry, Prime Minister. Follow-up question. When the project was launched, I think by the member of San Fernando West in June 2020, we, the country was assuming all EMA issues would have been cleared up. Even the PTSE bus relocation, the terminus, has not been done to date, and there no activity has started. Could you clarify when activity will start? It would, Madam Speaker, my answer remains the same that there are a number of components to the project, and if the appropriate notice would be given, an appropriate answer could be given to satisfy the member. Member for point up here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question number two to the Prime Minister. Given that the Nikon GTL plant is now operational, and there was an agreement with the state to purchase all the offtake from the plant, could the Honorable Prime Minister state if payments for these products would be made in U.S. dollars or T.T. dollars? Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, just for clarification, the agreement between Nikon and the other business operators are still in place. Nikon's arra arrangement is with Petrotrin um, Heritage. And Nikon sells zero-sulfur diesel which fetches a premium of 25% above the market price, and it will be sold in U.S. dollars. So it's a U.S. dollar transaction. Number four point up here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Honorable Prime Minister, given that we have a shortage of foreign exchange in the country, would it, are you saying then that <clears throat> the products purchased from Nike One will be paid in U.S. dollars to Nikon GTR Limited? That's exactly what I'm saying. But the arrangement is such, Madam Speaker, that um, that's only a part of the arrangement. The arrangement between Nikon and the seller is that there's an offtake agreement where Nikon supplies its product to Heritage, to Aparium. That product is sold on the international market for U.S. dollars, and then the payments are separated when they come back into the country. It's a U.S. dollar transaction. Of a point up here. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Prime Minister, follow up. Prime Minister, when do you feel that the low sulfur diesel that is produced by Nikon would be um, available for local consumption at the local market? Prime Minister. As soon as the supply is available, it should be available to the local market because it is, it is meant to be to satisfy the local and the foreign market. The first products have only just come off the plant, so if the member would be a little patient, we expect that uh, we would either use the product locally or sell it or have a combination of both. But it's an addition to our diversification. Member for point of Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, 
a follow-up question to the Prime Minister. Seeing that we do have Petrotrain anymore and it was, the agreement was, was with Petrotrain, what state company would be responsible for purchasing the products from Nike One GTL Limited? Madam Speaker, the same arrangement that existed before with the, um, the principal company of Petrotrain, the Petrotrain successor companies would have that arrangement in place. So whether it's Heritage or Petroleum or, or Paria, it, Paria is the company that's dealing with fuel. It may be Paria, it may be Heritage, depending if you're blending. But Heritage imports finished diesel, and Nikron's diesel is not for consumption of the plant. It is, it's for blending and improving other diesel. So that arrangement will remain in place, and the market is there both for export and import, depending on what our needs are. Member for Naparima. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To Prime Minister, given Guyana's rise as a regional energy hub and the significant trade and other opportunities that will result, could the Prime Minister provide a house with an update on the proposed establishment of a High Commission in Georgetown? Minister. Madam Speaker, there is no proposed establishment of any High Commission in Georgetown. The High Commission of Trinidad and Tobago in Georgetown has already been established and has been operational since 2019. Madam Speaker, there's, there's a staff in the Commission that has been functioning, and I don't know why a Member of Parliament would continue to mislead the population in this way. Member from Naparima. Um, in the light of what the Prime Minister said, could, could the Prime Minister indicate the staffing, or if not, the High Commissioner designate or co High Commissioner to Guyana? Which, which question it is that you want answered? To indicate who is the, the High Commissioner to uh, Georgetown, given that a, a mission has been Jeanette established. Minard, Prime Minister. Well, that noise, Madam Speaker, I'm not sure I heard the question. Could you repeat the question, please? Could the Prime Minister indicate who is the High Commissioner from Trinidad and Tobago to Guyana? The Commission is functioning without a High Commissioner. There's the charge of fair and full and staff in place. But the High Commission is functioning. There's a High Commissioner to be appointed, and that appointment would be made at the appropriate time. Member for Kearney Central. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Prime Minister, given the recent withdrawal of some US $900 million from the Heritage and Stabilization Fund in fiscal year 2020 and a further US $300 million for fiscal year 2021 thus far, could the Prime Minister inform the House of the productive application of these sums aimed at diversifying the national economy inclusive of structural reform? Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, funds from the Heritage and Stabilization Fund are deposited into the Consolidated Fund and are utilized to finance all the fiscal and economic programs of the government as authorized by the Parliament via approval in the annual budget, and that includes the salary of members of Parliament. There's therefore no specific earmarking of funds for the specific purpose. It's, the con it's, it's budget support which goes into the consolidated funds. And you don't identify the individual dollar bill that came from the HSF, but you identify the general expenditure. So it, it funds the development program. It funds every aspect of government's operations during the year. Member for Kearney Central. Can the Prime Minister indicate whether further funds will be withdrawn from the Heritage and Stabilization Fund to pay public servants? I'm not going to allow that as a supplemental question based on what was asked and answered. Member for Urupuch East. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Is the Prime Minister aware that in the report on the first withdrawal to the amount of 400 million United States dollars, it states specifically 
support to the Ministry of Works and Transport, the Housing Development Corporation, and the UDICOT in exact figures from that drawdown? Prime Minister. Well, Madam Speaker, I don't know what is the point of that. The government's annual budget for service of the country contains a development program. And some of that money will go to the development program. There's a fungibility involved. If I just told you it funds the annual budget, and in the budget, the development program has housing, it has bridges, it has roads, that is what it's doing. The, the fund is not withdrawn specifically to be applied to a particular project. It goes into the consolidated fund and therefore supports the entire uplift of the state. Member for Naparima. The Prime Minister gave this House the assurance that withdrawals from the HSF will be used primarily for investments and not recurrent expenditure. Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, everything the government does in this country is an investment, whether it's a social program or health or education. That's Everything we do to service the country is an investment, either in our health, our education, our national security, our construction, our investment in business. That is for the health of this country. Member for Karani. Me? Member for Karani Central. Supplemental, please, Madam Speaker. Uh, to the Prime Minister, given uh, the report of the roadmap to recovery, that report, there were certain strategies identified. Can, you, can the Prime Minister indicate when those strategies are to take effect in this country? I will not allow that as a supplemental question. Member for Baratari Sanu. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, can the Prime Minister indicate whether or not he's aware that based on the two reports laid for the withdrawals from the HSF, those monies were not in fact, gone, were not in fact expended on the development program, but on recurrent expenditure to pay contractors right before a general election? I am not aware of any such thing, Madam Speaker. What I am aware of is what I'll repeat again, that the Consolidated Fund covers all aspects of government's expenditure in the national budget. And part of the national budget that the member for Barataria approved is a development program which involves the payment to contractors. So I don't know what this is about except to misinform, misdirect, and mislead the population. Thank you. Since the Prime Minister says that everything the government does is an investment, could he indicate whether the payments of rents on one Alexandra place is, a, is an investment? I'm not going to allow that question. Member for Kareny Central. Speaker. Could the Prime Minister provide a status update on the legislation necessary to make non-lethal weapons, such as pepper spray, available for use by citizens? Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, the government has stated publicly of its intention to approve pepper spray for the use by citizens. It also indicated in this House, I think it was, that we have got the advice of OLEP, which is the, um, which is the advice we sought as to whether, in fact, it was um, safe enough to make it widely available. We indicated that the answer was yes, we could, and that it would be done with the use of particular permits. This matter has been brought before the cabinet. It has, been, it has found favor and has been sent to FNGP to finalize the nature of the permitting that is to be done, and very soon that should be out of the cabinet and available for operationalization. Member for Orhut, please. Prime Minister, given the gravity of this situation, particularly with the increasing reports of violence against women and, and girls, has the Prime Minister indicated to the FNGP or any other relevant committee a deadline by which this matter must be dealt with in Parliament and permits can be made available to vulnerable citizens? Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I wish I didn't have to deal with this because if my colleague from Oropooch East had dealt with it eight years ago, right? Where the, same, where the same gravity existed, where women were being attacked and killed in similar fashion, 
I wouldn't have had to deal with it. But I give the assurance, I give the assurance that in very short order, in very short order, in this government, approval would be granted and the women will have it in their hands. Member for Karani Central. Thank you, Madam Speaker. To the Prime Minister. Could the Prime Minister inform this House of the terms and conditions of the loan agreements made with the Inter-American Development Bank and CAF De Development Bank of Latin America as outlined in the Cabinet Subcommittee Report on the Water and Sewage Authority recently laid in Parliament. Madam Speaker, the member for, is that Prince System? Carney Central. Central is hell-bent on misleading the population. This matter was raised in a similar way and the Minister of Finance came out and told the country that there is no loan arrangement in place with these agencies. It was done by public statement. The member insists on putting that in the media. The Ministry of Finance has, and Madam Speaker, what is worse? The document that he refers to was laid in this parliament, and I assure you, Madam Speaker, if you look in that document on WASA, which the government laid, you will see no reference to any loan being entered into. What is said in that document, Madam Speaker, for the benefit of any person who read it, is that there is a future possibility of funding operations at WASA in its a reorganization with loans that could be had from the CAF or from IDB. This member from Karani Central has gone out telling people that the action at WASA to reorganize and to improve WASA's performance is as a result of conditionalities that we have made from loans at WASA, at IDB. Madam, nothing is further from the truth. There has been no loan funding arranged. What we have said is that it is a future source and a future and possible it's too confusing for the member for Karadi Central. I simply ask him to stop misrepresenting the facts in this country. Member for Karadi Central. Supplemental, please, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, on the, from that report on page 25, uh, these two entities were identified as stakeholders. Can the Prime Minister indi indicate how did they became stakeholders to a meeting to discuss WASA? Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I, I, I have nothing further to say on this question to the member in misleading people. All that I've said is the fact. There's nothing else to it. Nothing else to what I've said. It's a possible source of funding, future possible funding. So there is no loan in place with no conditionality. And therefore, it is quite wrong to be saying that the government's attempt to deal with the WASA problem is as a result of any conditionality of any loan we've entered into. Madam Speaker, the member is confusing the public, and I wish he would stop. Member for Karen Center. Madam Speaker, I wish to indicate the question was not answered. Can I, would you give me permission to, to restate the question? Member, the question was asked and the question was answered. You are entitled to ask another question if you wish. Madam Speaker, supplemental, please. Um, I hope I don't get the same answer. Can the Prime Minister indicate whether any arrangement with these possible for future arrangement will be made by public procurement or the government intend to rely? One minute. Just so that we'll be guided as we go forward. Sucking of teeth is not permitted inside of here. Okay? Anyone who feels frustrated, anyone who's intolerant, is free to leave the chamber, compose themselves, and return. Member for Carrie Central. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Can the Prime Minister indicate any possible loans with these two entities whether it will be done by public procurement or whether it will be done using Clause 7 of the recently passed public procurement legislation. Board to this I will allow that as a supplemental question, having regard to what was asked and what has been answered. Member for Kuva South. Thank you. Prime Minister, could you inform this House if the IDB and the CAF Bank recommended to the Cabinet to conduct a manpower audit into the operations of WASA to determine if workers should be terminated. Prime Minister. My colleague from Kuva South is another offender. Uh, 
that colleague of ours has taken ownership of a statement which is completely untrue that some international agency, and he named, I think it was the World Bank, now he's talking about the IDB and the CAF, as giving the government of China to be going instructions about workers and reorganization. Madam Speaker, the government has said publicly that the member's statement is not true, it's mischief, and we are in no such arrangement, and we are following no conditionality made to us by any international agency. And Madam Speaker, as fast as we repeat it, they come out and, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker I can Speaker, say no more. Madam Speaker, standing order 48.6. The Prime Minister is entitled to his opinion and his views, but he ought not to be accusing members of the opposition as making mischief. That is improper. Thank you. Member for Kuvasau. Prime Minister, could you inform the House then if the Water and Sewerage Authority has commenced a manpower audit into WASA to determine if workers will be terminated? Okay, so I will not allow that as a supplemental question based on the principal question asked and answered and the following question. Member for Faisabad. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Could the Prime Minister provide the House with an update on the status of negotiations between the government and providers outside the COVAX and African Medical Supplies Platform facilities for the procurement of COVID-19 vaccines? Prime Minister. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Madam Speaker, in October 2020, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, through the Ministry of Health, started bilateral discussions with producers of vaccines in China, Sinopharm, and later on, Madam Speaker, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, alongside the Ministry of Health, had communication and contact with producers of vaccines in India who are producing for Western Europe and the Americas, including the Caribbean. We are also in bilateral discussions with the major producers of approved vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and AstraZeneca. These discussions are ongoing, and depending on how far those discussions have progressed, there are confidentiality agreements in place. We will update the country once we have firm commitments from any of these discussions. Madam Speaker, as you will know, there are few producers of vaccines in the world, and their supply has largely been contracted out and bought out by large contracts in the major wealthy countries. And we are in an arrangement to get vaccines in the COVAX, and even this, the volumes we expected in the COVAX are not being satisfied because of supplies from the approved manufacturers being cornered by the large countries. However, Madam Speaker, we anticipate that in the very near future we'll get our first shipment of vaccines in COVAX and there'll be a continuous flow after that. And the marketplace will improve as more and more, vaccine, uh, more vaccines become available. And we expect that by mid-year this question of availability of vaccine will recede. Member for Faisalabad. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Prime Minister, thank you for that update. Uh, can you indicate, are you in a position to indicate the number of vaccines that the government intends to procure outside the COVAX um, African Medical Supplies Platform so as to create the herd immunity that is required uh, to allow for the open, opening up of the economy? Speaking, Madam Speaker, what we're looking at is getting to a level of vaccinating in terms of actually having people vaccinated is about approximately six or 700,000 because that would mean we are in the order of between 60 and 75% and the biology will tell us that that is where we are in the range of herd immunity. However, Madam Speaker, having the vaccine is one thing. Getting it into people's arms voluntarily is another thing because there's one country, Madam Speaker, I know of that has a lot of vaccines, but is having great difficulty in having people vaccinated to get to this state of herd immunity. So I trust that in Trinidad and Tobago, when we get our vaccines, there will be a high acceptability and that people will get themselves vaccinated and we will move from a, a low percentage to upwards of 60% and then we will be able to do a lot of things, including um, taking steps to open up our border and so on. 
Prime Minister, as head of government of this country, do you at this time have a clue as to when this country will receive or have possession of 1.4 million doses for 700,000 persons to equate to herd immunity? Do you have a clue of when this country will have mass administration of vaccines? Prime Minister. I just said that we expect in short order to begin off uh, receiving our supply from COVAX. That will be the beginning of a flow of vaccine into this country. The COVAX commitments are in place. And the Madam Speaker, understand that we don't make vaccines and vaccines cannot be bought and demand in the world. And Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, we don't make vaccines and worse, vaccines cannot be bought on order in today's world. That situation will improve in the months ahead. We have commitments. We have discussions in place. We have contracts in place. We have payments in place. And given the world supply, Madam Speaker, to answer the question from the member of Apuchis, as I speak to you now, we are looking at about media, that the availability and flow by May, June, July, August, that the flow of vaccines into our country would be such that we would be very busy vaccinating the population, and we expect that the marketplace, the availability of vaccine in the marketplace towards the end of the year would, be, would not be a problem because there'd be more suppliers and larger volumes which are no longer commanded but available to small countries like ours. Madam Speaker, there's one CARICOM country that has done something which we are not prepared to do. The health department in one CARICOM country has authorized the use of unapproved vaccines um, into their country because the difficulty exists. There's no WHO approval for uh, uh, the, 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 Sput, the, the what they call it, Sputnik and Sinopharm vaccine. And we are not prepared to vaccinate our population with anything other than WHO vaccines, and that is what is going to stand. So all this, all this carrying on about we not getting vaccine and we late, madam, is a product that is not available. Huh? Uh, tell me, as a 72-year-old with comorbidities, when will I be vaccinated? Prime Minister, I'm not going to allow that question. Member for, member for Oropuch is... Uh, could I ask the Prime Minister if the Prime Minister has a specific and precise response to a question? Is there any update on the request made by this government for the provision of World Health Organization approved vaccines from the Republic of India? This is no. There's no update. Okay, and member for Karani East. Thank you. Prime Minister, are you aware? that the Moderna vaccine is not WHO certified at this moment? But, Madam Speaker, I am aware, but the countries that produce it provide approval to be used within their uh, borders, and therefore that's why it is not available to people like us, because it's only approved to be used within the borders of certain countries and the, the countries that produce the vaccine. We can't buy it off the shelf, we can't buy it from the supplier. Business, government business. Well,